drugging the woman that I was interested in was just a rather convenient time-saving device. <laughs> so basically what this is, is just a rather efficient time-saving device. Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise Swervesies, it's just a fact and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up. <laughs> Today we're diving back into r slash leg beard stories. Oh my god, you guys are gonna be shocked what happened. I don't know if you can tell from the title or the thumbnail or what. But yes, indeed, user Solid Adept has made his glorious reappearance. Rumors of his demise have been greatly exaggerated, okay? <laughs> He's back after like, Jesus, a month and a half, almost two months maybe, to drop yet another stealth beard story onto us. And I'm totally here for it, you know? People have been wondering in the comments like, what happened to this dude? And I was never able to get an answer out of him. <laughs> <laughs> but I did send him a message, as he says in the very first paragraph of this post, and I'm glad that that did spur him on to continue this saga, because it is a good one. I really, really want to know what happens, how it all turns out, how he gets everything flipped around, topsy-turvy, and brings it to this leg beard. Or possibly, you know, she brings it to him and has his life fall apart, but it doesn't sound like that's what happened from the foreshadowing in the first few posts. Anyways, we are going to dive right into it. Let's get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way, and then we will dive right into some leg beard stories cringe. Stealth Beard, the leg beard of ultimate destiny. Part number six, the unkindest kind of cavalry. Oh, I like that alliteration. That's good stuff. <laughs> Red X sent me a message asking if I was okay. I did. The answer to that is complicated, but I'm just gonna say, yeah, sure, for the sake of simplicity. Dude, I legitimately do hope things are alright with you. I know it's a crazy time in the world, and if you do need help, don't be afraid to reach out to me. I'll help you in any way that I can. I'm very sorry for making you guys wait so long for the next entry, as this is where things start to heat up pretty significantly. And it's a hard thing for me to encourage myself to sit down and spend hours reliving this point of my life. Judging by the comments I've seen and the messages that I've received, it's something that I can't simply drop and walk away from. Or rather, I shouldn't do that because folks really do deserve some closure regarding my journey through this hellhole. So we shall continue the tale today after a swarm of links and plugs. And it is quite a literal swarm. <laughs> part 1, Part 2, Part 3, wow, Part 4, Part 5, and all narrated by Red X Links. That is absolutely beautiful. You can also just change the last digit of the URL, which I didn't do on purpose, but it is neato. <laughs> so to summarize, if you missed the past episodes, which are linked in the description, or if you simply can't sit through OP's word salad, I met a leg beard. LB, and her seemingly normal friend, THC, which stands for Thicky Chick, while at the library. My male friend, TF, Trollface, encouraged me to go clubbing with them at a gay nightclub. I ended up freak dancing with my male friend while the legbeard took a video. I met up with her and was strong-armed into going to her house for a uh, makeover. My head was shaved, Ridiculous makeup was applied, and Legbeard snuck yet another photo, but she also agreed to make me a Facebook and let me use her PC. Surely, I could find some dirt on her if given the chance, I just need to create my opportunity. So I called in Trollface for the assist, got some money and some booze together, and we plotted our plan for the destruction of this Legbeard. And now on to current events. With our booze freshly in hand, we drove back to my house to call Legbeard and set the wheels of our karmic millstone spinning. <laughs> Soon Legbeard would be crushed into a fine powder, and I would smile happily as I pissed on her remains. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Trollface and I chatted about girls and games and nothing in particular, and before we knew it, we were back at my house. Trollface popped the car door open in a flash and bounded towards my house like the goofy puppy man that he always seemed to be. 
I strolled slowly behind him, my mind still rolling about how exactly all of this could possibly work out in my favor. Trollface has been told long ago to never knock on my front door. My mom just hated to get up and distract herself from whatever TV program or randomly selected penis that she was currently engrossed in, or was currently engrossed in her, if we're going the other way with it. Ugh. <laughs> God damn. You don't gotta phrase it like that. What's going on here? My one and only friend was just bouncing in place slightly on the porch, obviously still full of his puppy energy. The bottle of Grey Goose clutched in his hands like his favorite chew toy. I opened the door and entered. It was late afternoon, and my mother was at her usual perch on the couch. She scowled until she saw the bottle that Trollface was holding, <laughs> and only then did she invite him to come sit down. That predator smile on her lips the whole time. And if you're wondering what kind of predator, you probably do already know. It was a cougar. <laughs> God, your mom's a cougar, bro? Oh, she's gonna beg your best friend. That's bad news bears. <laughs> I tugged at Trollface, trying to swing him out of danger's manicured clutches. Mother, Trollface is just stopping by to help me out. We'll be out of your hair in a minute, I pleaded. She stood and laid a hand on Trollface as well. Her cold eyes were now boring their way into my soul. It would be rude not to sit and talk a while. Perhaps uh, he could help me out too. I'm sure he's a young man with many talents. She purred hornily. <laughs> hornily. What an adjective. <laughs> this isn't the first time that my mother has tried to put the moves on one of my friends. It probably wouldn't be the last time either. I rolled my eyes and just walked off towards the telephone to call Legbeard. Trollface called after me, Don't worry about us, bro. <laughs> We're just gonna have a drink or two. I seethed internally. Cool. Yeah. Whatever. Pre-game with my goblin of a mother, you stupid puppy dick. Just go ahead. Red rocket all over the fucking living room couch. <laughs> I think you've forgotten the goddamn mission already. After a single glance of some menopausal pussy. Ugh. Useless. <laughs> I jabbed at the caller ID with the force of a million exploding suns, damn near knocking it from the wall while I scrolled back to find what I thought might be Legbeard's number. I still had the mission in plain view. We were doing this shit. I dragged Trollface over there by his goddamn hair if that's what it took. <laughs> <laughs> what a shift. In the last episode, I'm pretty sure we had like a good view of Trollface, but OP's just like swip swapping back and forth, seemingly based on a whim. Although I guess I would be pretty upset too if my friend was like about to bang my mom. <laughs> <laughs> the line rung a few times too many, and finally I heard that familiar voice that I had grown to hate so very much. To summarize, I got directions. Got told that creating social media profiles would take, quote, as long as it took, unquote, was called an idiot and stupid and ugly. Well, she insisted that she was only trying to help me reach my full potential. Classic nagging, the whole rigmarole. Before I hung up, I told her that Trollface said that he wanted to come by later once he was done doing such and such for his parents. All the while, my fucking idiot friend is cackling in the background with my mother. <laughs> but Legbeard luckily didn't notice. She seemed a bit flustered that her crush would possibly find his way to her house. She scrambled to find the right words while I just said, Okay, see you soon, bye! And hung up. It really felt like I was in the driver's seat now. That's right, take your power back. <laughs> I was beaming as I walked back into the living room, until I saw what the hell was going on in there. Trollface had his sleeve rolled up. My mom was rubbing his bicep and gulping down vodka like a horny teenager. <laughs> it made me sick. I clapped my hands loudly to snap her out of her drunken shamelessness. My mom shot daggers at me, while Trollface simply raised an eyebrow quizzically. 
Trollface said, oh, so did you talk to her? I nodded and said, let's get on the road. My mom squealed that <laughs> Trollface should stay just a little bit longer. Trollface stood, peeling my mother's hands from his bicep as he said, no can do. I got, uh, a date. <laughs> More whining. I, I bet I can make you forget all about that floozy. <laughs> floozy. <laughs> <laughs> Such an old people word. I'm surprised you didn't call her a strumpet. <laughs> that strumpet. Uh, she huffed and puffed all of this out while trying to gather up her sagging tits and mush them into something more presentable. <laughs> God damn. Uh, OP don't hold back, man. Holy hell. Trollface and I both stood, stunned for a second, glancing at each other and just soaking in the irony of that statement. <laughs> I bolted towards the door, and Trollface said a quick, uh, maybe another time, while dipping out with me and speed walking towards the car. As I buckled the seatbelt of my man-child puppy friend, I gave him a pleading look. Don't bang my mom, dude. He let out one of the hardest laughs that I have ever heard. <laughs> when his laughing finally calmed a bit, he punctuated the giggle fit with a simple, oh, gross. <laughs> so classic. That was good enough for me, I guess. I punched the gas and headed back to Trollface's house while telling him the plan. I knew that Legbeard would make the social media creation as difficult as possible, but the profiles were never really my real goal. I just needed to get Legbeard away from her computer and give myself some time to dig around for whatever the hell it was that I was supposed to be looking for. I told him to hang back for like an hour or two and then pop up whenever he figured that we might be done making said profiles. Trollface nodded and asked, Do you think this shit's actually gonna work? I shrugged and said, It has to. Then he popped out of the car and I rolled onward to meet my destiny. My only salvation resting on the shoulders of a literal horn dog. <laughs> I knocked at Legbeard's door for a solid couple of minutes. She had confirmed to me that she would be home, so what the hell was going on? Was she just playing games with me? Just then the door flung open. That acrid, sour cat urine smell slapped me in the face as she said something along the lines of, Ugh! Finally! Fig Chick got so bored fucking waiting for you that she fell asleep. Literally! I just grunted at her as I entered. I didn't care about anything except the mission at hand. The house did look different, though. It was clear that she had made an effort to make things more presentable. Definitely not on my account. She was probably nesting. Excited that I had mentioned Trollface coming over later? Hmm... Might have been cute if she wasn't such a wretched harpy. <laughs> a harpy's a bird lady and she's nesting. It all makes sense. <laughs> I reminded myself to paste the fake friend smile back on my face and said, Wow, I really like what you've done with the place. She returned the grunt that I delivered her earlier and said, <laughs> I don't care what you think. <laughs> oh, bitch. <laughs> Before heading down the hallway and heading into the mystery room that I had taken a peek inside of yesterday, I followed her in and feigned surprise. Wow, you have been really cleaning up, huh? She let out a laugh and shrugged. <laughs> well, I've got to keep my office clean. It makes for a good headspace for work. I decided to press my luck a little bit. So, uh, you work from home? That's cool. What is it that you do? She stared at me for just a second too long before blurting out, I work from home! Shut the fuck up! Let's get your dumbass online! <laughs> she plopped her scarecrow-like frame down into the desk chair and navigated to Facebook. She proceeded to ask me a series of questions, birth date, high school, friendships, most of which I lied about through my teeth, there was no way that I would let her get any more leverage on me than she had already. When the time came for a profile picture, she pulled out her phone. I protested. Oh, nah, uh, I don't really need a profile picture. She shook her head. 
I took one for you yesterday. <laughs> Don't you remember? My heart dropped through the floor. I knew exactly the photo that she was talking about. The fucking makeover photo. My stupid face slathered with makeup. Head shaved balder than the day that I was born. Yeah, she was proceeding to tighten her grip. This had not been an act of generosity after all. I truly should have known better. Snakes don't know how to do anything other than be snakes. God damn, dude, she really is a mastermind. I wouldn't have seen that coming at all either. <laughs> I thought it was just like another thing to keep as a memory or something like that, but yeah, she had a plan for it the whole time. Fucking wild. I watched with horror as she uploaded the picture as the profile, and right afterwards, she sent a friend request to my mom, who she had searched out a few episodes ago. The clock in the corner told me that it was after 7 p.m. Perhaps my mom would be too occupied to see the cursed photo before I could do something about it. I clenched my teeth and asked if I could try navigating the site and finding some old friends. Well, she wasn't having it. She started asking me what their names were. Jesus, this plan was going off the rails really fast. She definitely ain't as dumb as she looks, OP. <laughs> you thought she was playing softball? Nah. <laughs> it's fastballs all day, every day. Suddenly, there was a knock at the door. The cavalry had finally arrived. Legbeard dragged me along with her to answer it, and there stood Trollface. Bottle of Grey Goose held up in an almost model-esque pose, and a big dumb smile on his face. I had never been so happy to see him, or that big dumb smile. <laughs> Legbeard seemed very excited as well. She leapt towards him, cooing about, How she missed him so much! I made the gag me face <laughs> right behind her back, and Trollface gave me a sly wink over her shoulder. Trollface scraped her arms off of him, and handed her the bottle. Oh, you ready to get fucked up? She didn't answer directly, instead taking a long slug of straight vodka. I have to give Trollface credit. I was pretty sure that he had planned this entire thing out. On the surface, he seemed more shallow than a wet sidewalk, but there turned out to be a lot of hidden depth, as I would later come to find out. Legbeard called for Trollface to come inside, while she headed to the kitchen to grab some glasses, babbling the entire time like a nervous schoolgirl. <laughs> she definitely is crushing on this dude. Trollface has to be like an attractive fellow, right? I don't know if we got like a super good description of him, but it seems like everyone wants the D from old Trollface. <laughs> she said, oh, We really shouldn't drink from the bottle like a couple of heathens. <laughs> I usually prefer rum and coke, but... I think there's some juice in the fridge. She snapped her fingers at me. OP, be a darling and grab the orange juice so we can have a proper drink. I did as requested, my head spinning the entire time. How could she swap so easily from evil bitch to Stepford wife? <laughs> Just like that. Her fridge was pristine and well stocked. A nice supply of anything that you could desire including a couple of cartons of orange juice. I guess I shouldn't be surprised by that, considering, like, all the designer bags and other shit she has laying around. It is weird that she manages to stay skinny with a, a fridge full of food. <laughs> but maybe uh, Thicky Chick is consuming some of that. She seems to be over there all the time, from what I could tell. All this food in the fridge was a far cry from the barren offerings in the refrigerator at my own home. I handed Legbeard a carton. Legbeard set out four glasses and told me to continue being a sweetheart and go wake up Thicky Chick. I went to Legbeard's room and slowly opened the door. Thicky Chick was definitely asleep, snoring. It sounded like a tin roof getting ripped off a trailer park carport in a hurricane. <laughs> I still found it slightly endearing, though. I sat on the bed and gently shook her awake. She seemed shocked, but when I asked her to come to the kitchen for vodka and orange juice, it's called a screwdriver, Baldy, she practically sung as she ran a hand over my head. Again, 
I was stuck in the moment. As upset as I had been with her yesterday, one touch washed all of that away. It was her superpower. She rolled out of bed and headed to the kitchen, beckoning for me to follow, and I obeyed because now I was the stupid little puppy. <laughs> Legbeard and Trollface were already a couple of rounds ahead, but I encouraged Thick Chick to play catch up. I'd need to get them nice and soosed up. I mean, it was a big-ass bottle of vodka, but the only question was, would it be enough? <laughs> Especially after Trollface shared some with Mom, how much did they drink then? I know Thicky Chick's not of legal drinking age, so it would probably be pretty easy to get her, like, drunk and passed out, but Legbeard seems to drink uh, quite a little bit, so how can you really guarantee that a quarter or even a third of a bottle of vodka would be enough? to get her in the state to just let you have free reign in her house. Uh, it's complicated. <laughs> would it be enough indeed? Only time would tell. A few hours in, I was sitting with Thick Chick in the bedroom while Legbeard and Trollface cackled like a couple of hyenas in the living room. The hyena thing is exceptionally accurate in this case, since female hyenas do lead the pack and they also have giant pseudo cocks. <laughs> we get a little animal planet in this episode. Female hyenas are also exceptionally cruel to male hyenas. I ruminated on that thought for a moment before leaving Thick Chick to go fetch some more refills. Legbeard was definitely tipsy, leaning over the arm of the sofa far more than she should have been at this point. Trollface hopped up as he saw me. Oh, bro, let me help you out there, as he followed me into the kitchen. You fix your drink, let me take care of your lady love, he insisted. I didn't think anything of it until I grabbed the glasses to bring them back into the bedroom. Trollface put a hand on my shoulder and whispered into my ear, Don't you dare mix them up, before chuckling his way back to the sofa and wrapping Legbeard under one arm shaking her a bit and pointing at her limp form like it was just the funniest thing in the world. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> this is Trollface's insurance policy? Fucking Rohypnol? Bruh. They can't be illegal, right? Holy shit. I knew instantly what he had done. Suddenly I knew why he offered to help me make the drink. So now, I had quite the moral quandary. The right thing to do would be go dump the drink out, wash the glass, and make Thick Chick something that was untainted. But who's to say that she would actually get drunk enough to let me slip away and get to Legbeard's computer? Hmm. People don't die from roofies, right? <laughs> so, when you really think about it, drugging the woman that I was interested in was just a rather convenient time-saving device. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, <laughs> the mental gymnastics here. Holy shit. That's what I like most about these stories. Solid Adept really puts you like inside of his own head. Instead of just like a dispassionate series of events, he's like, well, here's why. Here's my thought process behind what I did. Anyways, an older and wiser me knows that people can definitely die from roofies. And I have a lot of regrets about what I did. I played dumb. I decided not to mix the drinks up, but I also decided just not to consider what I had been told by Trollface too deeply. I walked in, handed Thick Chick her drink, and continued the inane conversation about the type of dog that she wanted to get or something like that. It only took about 30 minutes. Suddenly, Thicky Chick said she was tired and laid down on the bed. <laughs> You're going to be real tired in another 30 minutes. <laughs> she also said that she was having some trouble breathing. Oh, shit. My mind was fucking racing. But I assured her that yeah, it was just the booze. And I told her that she should sleep it off. I drink vodka all the time. This one's just so strong. Just, just say with me, OP. I told her that I would. And again... I lied through my goddamn teeth. As soon as she was unconscious, I slipped away and took a peek into the living room. 
Trollface was still sitting with an arm around Legbeard. He shot me a thumbs up and another quick wink. <laughs> God. How do I go from, like, loving Trollface to hating him? Back to loving him so quickly. I guess I can see where OP's coming from. <laughs> he's hard to love, but he's harder to hate. <laughs> I wanted to go slap the shit out of him. I wanted to ask him, what the hell could possibly be wrong with him? The attempt to get out of some simple blackmail could now easily turn into a fucking murder charge. If I thought my life was the shambles before, <laughs> just wait until I got put behind bars because Thick Chick or Legbeard's nervous system just shut itself off or some shit. <sighs> I pushed down the sickness in my gut and I shoved the fear into the back of my brain. I had already done the unthinkable. We had already come this far, so I might as well get the goddamn plan over with. I sat down in the chair deleted the cursed profile picture on my Facebook before logging out of it completely, and then I began the search. I had all the time that I needed at this point, but I still felt myself rushing simply because I did not want to be in this situation anymore. The quicker I could go home and just scrub the memory of what I had just done, the better. Yeah, this is like crimes on top of crimes, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting way in over your head at this point, OP. I'm glad you still have, like, a conscience about it, a bit of morals shining through, but holy shit, man. Thick Chick was young. She probably would have passed out anyways, even if it was just straight vodka. Legbeard, I don't feel so bad about. <laughs> She's sort of a bitch, but really nobody deserves to get rohypnolled. What the fuck? <laughs> With haste, I logged into Legbeard's Facebook profile. I made a quick mental note of some contacts, including who I thought might be her parents. It didn't seem like she talked to them too much, through Facebook at least, so I decided to move on. Digging through bookmarks, it didn't seem like there was too much of note. A shitload of shopping sites, Pinterest crap, Tumblr trash, Reddit garbage. <laughs> Shout out to r slash female dating strategy. Oh my god, Legbeard actually hanging out on r slash female dating strategy? Confirmed. <laughs> That's wild. That's wild. There was also some banking stuff, but I didn't want to turn this into a guaranteed larceny if it somehow didn't manage to turn into a potential fucking murder. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's getting so heavy. Even the internet history didn't return anything that looked out of sorts really was nothing that I could use here. I looked under the keyboard for a hidden password paper like my mom used to use, and then I opened up one of the table's drawers. Silicone dicks. <laughs> Silicone dicks everywhere, along with a menagerie of butt plugs and vibrators and anal beads and so much more. Why would she keep them here instead of in the bedroom. And that is the moment when it clicked for me. The camera, the clean room, the sex toy bonanza. I quickly started searching for cam sites. <laughs> I began clicking furiously through the results until finally I came to a page which already had a user logged in. She was a cam girl. <laughs> I think some people called this already. But the way that it was uncovered is interesting. I would have just assumed it's in the browser history or something. Or maybe OP didn't quite know what he was looking for in the browser history, since he doesn't have a phone or computer of his own at this point. But yeah, I won't reveal the site or her username, but it is a big website. And looking through the dashboard, it seemed like she was making a mint by selling her coups virtually. <laughs> Paired with the name of her parents, I knew that I had the firepower to turn the tables. But just to ensure that the destruction wasn't mutual, I deleted the entire contents of every folder that I could find. Videos, pictures, downloads. If she had a copy of the big club and video here somewhere, it was recycled forever now. I mean, honestly, you probably just could have deleted the video to begin with, but now it's like, Blackmail for blackmail? Please don't blackmail the Legbeard OP. 
You already roofied a chick. You know blackmail's super illegal too, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna like you a lot less if you fucking do that. I walked out into the living room. Trollface was there, still rocking his little scarecrow girl back and forth. I dug into her pocket for her cell phone. These were the days of flip phones, and nobody put a lock on them. Even if I needed biometrics, she was passed out cold. <laughs> I found the video and the picture that haunted me so, deleted them both, and tossed the phone into Legbeard's lap. With a deep sigh, I said to Trollface, Let's get the fuck out of here. He snatched a bottle of goose from the kitchen and followed me out to the driveway. There were indeed still a lot of twists and turns to come, and while I was still fuming at Trollface for taking the situation as far as he did, in that moment I felt that my misery might finally be at an end. I was very wrong about that, as you shall find out. I promise I won't take too long to get it out. This was probably the hardest part to write because I still feel really guilty about what I did. But I tried to let you know from the beginning of these posts that I am no saint. The situation turned me into something terrible for a time. I promise that you won't feel too bad for these girls for too long though. The next part is gonna be another doozy. Anyways, as always, I want to thank y'all for reading and I'll see you next time. Bro, that is super fucking wild. I don't know if you can point the finger at Trollface 100%. Like, okay, he offered you the bullet, but you went into the bedroom and pulled the trigger. And Thick Chick is just kind of a girl that was caught in the crossfire, isn't she? I don't know, man. I can see why OP was hesitant to get this one out, because it's really not a good look. <laughs> as long as you don't end up blackmailing this leg beard in the next part, just as like turn about revenge, I guess it's sort of redeemable what you did. Maybe keep the blackmail as a little insurance policy or something like that, but yeah, this is this is all so fucking illegal. <laughs> blackmail and drugging chicks and blackmailing because of blackmail. What's the statute of limitations on that? Well, OP's from California. Offenses punishable by death or life imprisonment, numerous sex crimes. Those have no statutes of limitations, which I don't think those qualify. Offenses punishable by eight years or more in prison, six year statute of limitations. So we are past that already since OP said this took place in 2004 or 2005. I don't know if you already knew that and that's why you're only posting it now, but god damn, dude. <laughs> My view of OP has changed quite a lot since the beginning, but... Like he said, he did warn us that he turned basically into an animal <laughs> to get out of the situation. So I'm looking forward to the next part. I hope it doesn't go the way that I think it's going to go because the situation does seem to me to be over now, but uh, apparently that's not the case. So we will be awaiting part seven. I do thank you for writing it, OP, and for staying honest with us. This is the sort of thing where there really is no black and white, you know what I mean? Like, a shitty thing happened to you, so you did a shitty thing to the person, but eye for an eye kind of makes the whole world go blind, doesn't it? <laughs> so hopefully you could just let it drop, but I guess we'll see. I hope that you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, I hope that you'll like, comment, and or subscribe! Yes, indeed, check out them links in the description. All kinds of plugs and playlists, and also my social medias. Social medias. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter, Discord, Facebook, swing on through. Say hi to me. I do appreciate it. We've also got my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons. I'd like to thank them as I do every video, so thank you very much. Calvicus, Fatboy Sherp, Robert Waits, TSM Kirby, Aaron W, Twisted Child, Delicious Jelly Donut, Candy Sora, Fire Drake, Livison, Mr. Anime Manga Fan, Silent Revolver, Zero MMX, Magdala Marshall, Thorn Rose, Little Lone Wolf, Vanilla Mel, Roustower, Satori, Babsy Coon, Caustic Fox, Disposable Waifu, Aaron Lennox, Fisher Diggy, Hadrian BR, Heathcliff, OG James Cook, A Pimp named J. Crisp, J.M. Coon, Jerry, John Hero, Miss Monday, Lord Lion O, Jack, it's Rule, Melgar the Destroyer, Mirthful Baker, Mr. J, my boy Nat One Nick, Lady Nix, Orgami Steve, Katie Kins Elizabeth, Sidestep, Cider Drinker, Serrated Ass, Siegfried, Synaptic Boomstick, Brilliant Tamago, Tato Ferret, Teddy the Police, Ten Ton Monster, Dad Duck and Bug, The One True Fusky, Treeberg, Will Max, Redwind, Goose Says Honk, Leon Embers, Naga Viper, John Indoors, The Normal Joe, Amara, A Roxers, Cake, Jerry, that's a different Jerry. California Keto Girl, said hey to you yesterday, 
Cinnamon Bunny Dog, KJW, Kajow, Crafty Kitty Cat, Little Ann Woods, Mark 211, Maybe Next Time, Milk Fed Gimp, Miss Duchess, Orgami Cam, Princess Rosalie, Ghosty, Raptor Art, Ellie, The Last Shinobi, and the Necrobomicon. We also got two new friends joining us today. Good God, we are popping off. <laughs> so a big hearty Red X welcome to Saint's Blessing and Cherished Kitsune. We definitely have been blessed by the Saints or something because this channel absolutely blowing up. I'm loving how the Patreon is growing. I will add the new names to the list pretty shortly. I know I do slack off on it a lot, but it's a hard thing to update 10 times a month, isn't it? I think what's most importantly is that people have their names read out, you know, because most people are listening, aren't they? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I hope that some other people will join up on the Patreon, but if you can't do it right now, don't sweat it too hard, friends. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you need to keep yourself safe out there, wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe like, uh, I don't know, watching some more Red X videos? Maybe? <laughs> Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I shall see you in the next one, and until then, friends, bye-bye!